the 10,000 things in the world, the world that everybody believes in, that everyone thinks is real, is all contained in here, in this sphere, the sphere of gravity, the sphere, the sphere of all these objects, all interconnected, like an Isha drawing, all move interconnected and moving. Remember, this is the Earth, so all of this is rotating with the Earth. So as the Earth spins, all these things are moving, and everything is changing. You know, the tectonic plates are moving. Our fingernails are growing at the same speed. So every molecule in its posture, in its position, is moving into a new position. There's, there's no stasis, it's change. This is the world of the 10,000 things where everything is fleeting and everything is moving. And all of these objects here in this world, now this is the object, objective aspect of mind. This is the reality that we've constructed from all these other senses. It's something we believe in, this reality. The objective aspect of mind that is perceived through our senses, all of that is contained in there. And, and remember this real world is contained in there in the imaginary world, in the spirit world, in the mind. So this image of reality of all these objects is an image in mind. This, this is the mind map. This is the basic coordination of the system. So this is the position of the body and the bodies. Now all of those objects We have identified in our minds, we have felt around and with our hands and the touch. We have built up a, a catalogue of pressure maps that form a catalogue of all those objects. These are the platonic forms. We build up all those forms and we can scale and rotate them. So we can identify, for example, a table, you can understand Plato, Platonic forms. And then we can fit those objects into the world. So we see an object in the world, and we can remember when we touched it, and what object it is, and so we can fit it into the jigsaw, into the moving jigsaw. So we can see the, say, like the items of furniture being moved into our apartment and then out again. We can see that flow of things. So this flow of things is in this triangle. It's a flow of things from the hands to the mouth to the into the posture. From eating the vegetables to getting the nutrients out, the you know the, the uh, salts, the the stone, the minerals. So we construct our bodies. We get objects we taste, we construct our, our home, our living space, all those objects around us, in, inside, in our, inside our bodies and in our homes, in our lives, it follows the same cycle. You know, before we get external senses, those living organisms, those green plants, you know, come in to, to the stomach to be digested, to form the organism. The hands go to collect the shopping, according to our taste, to build up, you know, the future flow of things that we're going to need. So this is basically the, the food cycle. Now the basic, if you like, control is that we're taken away from collecting food and made to work. So we, we use our hands to move objects to fit into the world, and then we're paid in food. And that forms a pressure, this one pressure. So the actual physical pressure that forms the plant cell is the actual pressure of materialism, the pressure of life, the pressure of the economy. All of that is in this triangle, the tri pressure triangle. 
and that pressure comes out here in this chakra <coughs> in, in the uh, stomach <coughs> so any anxiety <coughs> or requiring things <coughs> comes out in, in, in the stomach in this chakra so there's this pressure signal which is oscillating remember as we move around and that's where all the pressure comes out into the navel chakra into the stomach so the pressure on every organism is there in the hunger in the need to produce, get the right chemicals the right nutrients to form the body and that the rate of the movement of this triangle then forms the rate of the movement of the next triangle so if that one triangle is moving fast then the, the pre see what I mean, if the pressure goes up on the objects on the volumes, on the shapes then the temperature increases if you get enough to eat then your you, you desire to reproduce increases same thing it's an interesting aspect of shopping if we get one item we want to get another item the same you know what I mean it's madness isn't it but that's why people start collecting things the desire to reproduce so as this energy level goes up and there's this desire to reproduce so we move into the audio triangle the sound of that energy changes the tension in those relationships from time to the space from following the smell of the pheromones and, and the sound or being under the control of an officer the control of time is restrictions so there's friction in relationships coming out in the audio in the voice and there's peaceful words in the voice if this is harmonized and this is the, this is the space time of the audio the soundtrack the relativity the moving in and out of folk in and out of distance the sound coming and going like the Doppler effect and you're getting closer and you know condensing or expanding you know change your state see so there's a change of state over space time depending on the en energy level and then there's a memory of all these obviously in the time in the different characters the different pressures and strains the put comes out in the voice and then with those pressures and strains and that running around from place to place so we have our gaze, our glance looking at faces and movements in the actual situation so these now, this is where we come on to the you know, the old hippie maxim you know, be here now what we call here is these floor things, these objects flowing, that's what's here what we call now is in the space time here see as now and what we call B is here in, in the attention is being in the in the present so this is the present this is now and this is here so it's here in here now present here now present like a roll call and the present is the presence, being present, it's being present in the relationship, being present in the moment, being present with the others, not being distracted, not being elsewhere, 
not having your mind on something else, but being present and to attention. To receive the teacher's instruction, the darshan from the guru. But it being, being, this is, this is what is essential. The being present and the presence and understanding. Not having, you know, some bully over you as the a, a domineering presence. You want a liberating presence. Not a bully. Not someone who's a superior. Not an, someone who's unequal, you know, to the task. But being a human being and being absolutely equal to all of us. And there's this presence here that is the key, key thing in the relationships. It's why we know we talk about restricting TB, um, eating together, so that these times in the relationship you're present together. This is a basic understanding of community life, the normal same life, normal family life, the being present and not having some focus of attention outside of the group. No false god, no god at all outside of the group. You see no images there, so that the attention, the attention is free, and we're free to imagine, we're free to dream together, to imagine together, to build our community life together, not be, you know, also serving, because we're standing and waiting, waiting for somebody to come back. Waiting is punishment. There's no time to wait. We need justice, we need a redistribution, we need to end this insanity, we need absolute equality, we need to care for each other, we need to stop this celebrity and brand name nonsense, you know, which is all fancy delusion, it's all delusion so that people, you know, can control us. All this nonsense about, you know, somebody's the only way or somebody's the last prophet, you know, yeah, absolute nonsense. You know, there's one God, so you must do what these people tell you. Why? Yeah, because this is the direct line, direct line back to the prophet, back to the guru, back to the king. Not if the message is of inequality, not if the message is not for personal development and the development of the community. I get from a true guru who wants the potential of the huma hum human humanity to be realized, wants us to enjoy a community, wants us to be ourselves, wants us to communicate because we have a heart, a heart that needs to be listened to, not condemned or damned or cut off or rejected or named or whatever. Not to be crucified. Be here now. We need this presence. And so in this presence, we can mirror each other and we can be aware of each other's movement, what the intent is. We can see, read the conscience and the perfectionist. We can see what our conscience is guiding us to do and we can do it perfectly. We can read the faces and see and respond objectively, honestly, you know, not pretending, not putting a silly face on or you know, a polite voice. We can be we can be honest, we can be straightforward, we can be simple, we can be calm, we can just deal with things objectively and not make everything into a big ego thing of being damned or being the, you know, God's gift, which is totally ridiculous. You know, someone never sinned, you know, come on. 
come on. So we need the equality in the presence, so that the, the presence of, of each other is, is, is encouraged. You know, encouraged to participate. If you cut off, then you divide. <coughs> and then the people you cut off, the stone that you rejected, becomes the head corner stone. So you can reject. You can reject, but this becomes the head corner stone. So this is in the third eye. So we have the attention here, the attention, the focus, the actual real interest, the curiosity. You know, the group pressure. Now this can be guided or pushed or coerced onto us. You know, must focus on God or Jesus or Muhammad or the Queen. You must focus on this ego. But we can say, no, hang on, you must focus, if you like, on the needs of your family and community. What are we looking at? What are we facing? Let's forget about what we've been told to look at. What are we really looking at? What are we facing? How can we help? This is where the attention should go. To see need in our own community and to see what the problem is. You know, and to help and to participate. We should see what we can do in the movement, how we can be a perfectionist according to our real conscience. And not to some nonsense conscience about dying for the country or the economy. It's it's the economy of the of the local community that matters, not the rich people taking things out, not someone coming along and fracking or something. And we need to see the real faces in our real community. Everybody. You know, nobody able to be rich and exclude themselves, and nobody else be able to, you know, pretend to be, you know, I don't know, ill or mental or anything to exclude themselves. Everybody's got to show their face. Everybody's got to participate and be present. If they want to take anything out, they've got to show themselves. You've got to participate. Everybody's needed. You know, everyone's got talents that they need to share, and everyone's got things that they need to be doing. To help, help themselves, look after themselves. They need encouragement and help to help themselves. We all know this. This is the pure understanding. From our being together and using this time on our schedule. Easing up on our schedule, not doing too much and not being too chaotic. You know, having these regular meal times. regular meal times, not in terms of some, you know, almighty doctrine, but in terms of the plain fact the earth is spinning round and we're going to go to sleep at certain times. We're going to wake up at certain times. So we should eat at certain times. We should know our systems. We should harmonize with those systems. And then the community should harmonize. We should harmonize our lives into the community. Harmonize the lives of our children and our young people into the community according to their cycles on a daily basis.